Tao Te Ching chapter 14. We look at it and we do not see it and we name it the equable. We listen to it and we do not hear it and we name it the inaudible. We try to grasp it and do not get hold of it and we name it the subtle. With these three qualities it cannot be made the subject of description and hence we blend them together and obtain the one. Its upper part is not bright and its lower part is not obscure. Ceaseless in its action it yet cannot be named. And then it again returns and becomes nothing. This is called the form of the formless and the semblance of the invisible. This is called the fleeting and the indeterminable. We meet it and do not see its front. We follow it and do not see its back. When we can lay hold of the Tao of old to direct the things of the present day and are able to know it as it was of old in the beginning, this is called unwinding the clue of Tao. In trying to describe the Tao in any way, in any shape, uh, it can't be done so easily. Even if you say you can't describe it, you can kind of describe it. If you say it's only brightness, that's not true. If you say it's only darkness, it's not true. If you say it's never doing anything that's not true if you say it's uh, <clears throat> nothing totally empty that's not true it's everything if you try to say this is it you cannot grasp it so easily which is <clears throat> the same as a lot of other like buddhist or tantric ideas in a more poetic way i like this text because it's poetic there's no need to spend a thousand years understanding every tantric text or buddhist text about not grasping yeah it's right here in this poem <clears throat> 